Mr. Coos, I think you're on mute. Okay, uh, this is the Bloomington Historic Preservation Commission meeting, and uh, I'm Greg Coos and uh, Vice Chair, and I will be chairing this meeting in uh, the absence of our chair, Paul Charnett. So I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for a roll call. Mr. Costello, um, Vice Chair Coos. Present. Ms. Chazelle. Present. Um, Ms. Grayling. Present. Ms. Peters. Present. And Chairperson Charnette. So we have two not present, one, two, three, four present. Okay. Um, the uh, public comment, do we have uh, anybody that had scheduled for a public comment or multiple people? Uh, nobody is registered and nobody appears to be here for public comment. Okay, uh, we will move on to minutes. And uh, does anyone have any comments, corrections uh, for the minutes of the uh, May meeting? I have one. Good for you. Okay. Um, on the very last page of the minutes where it was, it says an update on National Preservation Month activities. Um, essentially, we didn't really get into any specifics there and we did actually at the meeting, but we didn't have them put in. Um, and at that point, I brought up the fact that our awards section on the city's website had not been updated and populated with our new awards information. And unfortunately, this is not to do with this exactly, but I'll just say it now and then I'll say it again at the end of our meeting today, we are still there. So. Okay, can we will. get that added to our minutes then? Yes, I would like to add that to the minutes um, that we, had had this discussion. And uh, by the way, I also will tell you right now, I did uh, bring the awards um, and you know, the certificates and the banners to the uh, winners. So I've done that. So, but that's a new thing. But anyway, I wanted to just say, these people have been disappointed because they were looking for it online and they're still disappointed. Okay. Can I, we have a motion to approve the minutes as amended by member Grayling. I, I make a motion. That we second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, do we need a roll call for minutes? Yes, unfortunately okay. we have to do that when they're hybrid, they all have to be uh, roll calls. Okay, uh, roll call for our approval of minutes. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Coos? Yes. Ms. Giselle? Yes. Ms. Grayling? Yes. And Ms. Peters? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to our regular agenda. We have uh, four items on the agenda, five items. Uh, actually, we've got more than that. But in any case, uh, let's move into them. Uh, BHP 1021, a petition submitted by Anthony Seckler for certificate of appropriateness. Um, do we have a staff report that we need to review on this or should we move into uh, just uh, hearing from the homeowner? I need some advice on this, please. Uh, We've been uh, having the staff report first and then, and then proceeding to the uh, applications. Because this has been tabled from the May meeting um, where questions were raised. So does staff have an uh, update on the uh, questions that were raised at the May meeting? Uh, staff didn't receive any additional information either from the commission or from the petitioner. Hmm. Okay. okay. 
Um, since it was, we delayed approval or consideration, should I say, waiting for new uh, information, would it be appropriate for us to um, hear from uh, Mr. Seckler about the update that we had asked for? Yeah, I would think if he's if he's there um, or you know available for the meeting. I'm here. I'm sorry. I, I got oh, disconnected good. and joined back on there. I had an issue. <laughs> okay. Well, so, if matter, if it's, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to say then, based on 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 that, and, and thank you for for that, George. I would ask Mr. Seckler to update us uh, on the uh, material that we had asked him for. I'm reading, I got a, um, I got, I'm sorry, I got a bunch of email or a big long email from my uh, contractor. So I guess as far as the type of brick goes, what he told me was uh, this house, the house has been worked on a few different times, but what he was going to do, he's got a big yard in East Peoria and he's going to match the brick as best as possible. He's going to use a soft clay brick and get as close to the, the, one of the colors as possible. There's there's quite a few pink and lighter colored bricks. He's gonna use a very soft uh, clay brick. He says he doesn't know if he has the exact same thing as what we're using. It's a, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. Let me grab my notes. What do you call it? A clay floater brick. Hmm. Because the rest of them are, they're all floating brick. They're not, they don't have the holes in, in the middle where the mortar goes down through them. Oh. Uh, would, you, would you state that again, please, Mr. Seckler? So what he said he was going to do is try to match the brick as close to as, as what is uh, originally to the house as possible. It says it's a soft clay brick, um, it's a soft clay floater brick. Um, he's got a big yard that he has a bunch of inventory of different kinds of bricks in his his warehouse over in East Peoria and he's gonna do his best to match the original brick to the to the house. He said they're, they're a soft clay floater brick. He said have to come look and see what all he's got and match them as close as he possibly can. And, and this is a solid brick? Um, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a solid brick. It doesn't have the holes drilled in where the mortar flows through. He called it a floater. Okay. Um, there were the other issues had to do with the acid wash technique he was talking about and the mortar mix itself. Yep. So the mortar mix, he said he's going to use a type N mortar. It says it's a little softer than, than the rest of them. It has a lot less Portland cement. Um, the coloring will be matched as close as he can to get to the original mortar that's in the using at the house. Coloring is matched by using a salmon brand powdered coloring. Um, okay. The rest of it talks about, there's been, he, he talks about the other stuff he's talking about is other repairs that have been done to the house. So this, there's areas of the foundation that had been previously tuck pointed and probably weren't done through this. I'm not really sure, but he's gonna match the original. He said as best as he can, he'll use a type N mortar. He says it's a little softer than the rest, has less Portland cement in it. So it's not a concrete based mortar. I, I'm not real familiar with the different types of mortar myself, so I can't speak to it. I asked him if he could come tonight, but he's said he's working late and he, he could not make it. Hey, can you um, provide a, a copy of that uh, for uh, our records? Can you send that? Yeah, I can, I'll forward you the email that he sent me. Okay, yeah, you can send that written. to Caitlin. Yep. And then as far as the, he also, you also, I think I had questions about the joints and how, how he was going to grind them. In the yes. I, just to ask as a matter of form, we've been swearing in the witnesses um, for these. And I understand that much of what Mr. Sackler saying is, you know, something he's told by his contractor, but just as a matter of form, we haven't uh, swearing in the witnesses. And to, so could we have this witness sworn in? 
You certainly can. I appreciate your help. This is the first meeting I've chaired since 1985. Oh, no, so <laughs> it, was, it was my it was my slip up. You know, okay. So, um, George, exactly how do I go about swearing in a witness? I think you'd ask the witness if he'd swear or affirm that the testimony he has given today and that he will be giving uh, in in the uh, near future today uh, is the truth, the whole truth, and, and nothing but the truth. Do you swear or affirm that, Mr. Sackler? Yes, I do. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yep. And I will provide basically what I'm I'm, regurg I'm just regurgitating what he has put in this email, and I will send that to Caitlin as well, like you asked. Um, and when he talks about the joints, uh, he says the existing joints need to be half inch, uh, basically of sound mortar. And that's what that, that's what the originally what's at the, in the house right now is it's a half inch mortar. Um, basically he's going to grind it down. He's going to grind out all the really soft flaking away stuff and, and then just re reaffirm that, keep that joint at a half inch and use the, the type in mortar to refill that back up. Uh, to match the existing mortar or the existing foundation where, where it's still good enough to, and original. The, um, I assume he has experience at this. The, the issues that historic preservation can have with grinding is in the hands of a less experienced mason that can damage the brick in a significant way. And so uh, it is your opinion, Mr. Sackler, that this gentleman has a considerable masonry experience? Oh yeah, he's, he's been doing this, for, he, yes. He's about ready to retire. <laughs> he's been doing it for 30 plus years. And he doesn't say he's gonna grind it. He said he's going to, he doesn't really say how he's gonna do it. I don't, I don't know if he'll use a grinder, if he'll use a hand tool to get some of that out. Some of it's fairly deep. So I don't know that he'll grind that out when it gets very deep, but he doesn't. Yeah, it's, if it's a soft mortar and from the deterioration, he may well hand rake it and may rake out quite easily. Uh, yeah, I think that, kind probably of, will. that kind of mortar typically has quite a bit of lime in it. <laughs> and because from the water damage, the lime may well have quite a bit of that leached out of it. Yeah. So, does anybody else on the commission have any questions for Mr. Seppler? I do. This is yeah. Sherry. Um, I am was just checking to see we had questions at first about um, the acid washing. And so um, I don't know if that's what we're going to be doing or what the what the proposal finally decided. Yeah, and he's got okay he's got that here too. So what he'll tr he's worried about what I mentioned, I think it was stated about uh, using an old brick to kind of wash some of that off. He says scrubbing with an old brick may not work real well with as, as soft as those floaters are. Basically he's gonna use, what he states is a, a muriatic acid wash uh, is the best safest method. He'll mix it at a 12 to one ratio um, and to clean off the mortar smears. And what he says he's gonna do is basically he, he was, it is applied by wetting the wall in the area below it. And then you use like a, a, you brush, he doesn't say what kind of brush, you brush on the mixture, then almost immediately rinse it with cold water. Okay. Um, he says the muriatic acid should would only burn and should not burn or eat away the masonry. I left a very long, I've left for a fairly, okay, I see what he's saying. Yeah, that's how he's gonna do it. And I've got, that's in this email too. He explains that he, he will use that by using a brush and smearing it on and then washing it off immediately with rinsing it with water. Okay, thank you. Yes, muriatic acid to 12 to one ratio, yep. Are there any other questions from Mr. Sackler? Okay, the, uh, is there a staff report on whether the staff recommends uh, approval of uh, or disapproval of this uh, request? Uh, is there staff any change? Yeah, staff's recommendation has not changed. We are still recommending approval of the certificate of appropriateness. Okay. Can I hear a motion to approve uh, Mr. Sackler's application for certificate of appropriateness? Um, I like the motion. Looking at the staff report, there's two motions recommended. One is to uh, establish findings of fact. And generally, what we've done is either the staff would adjust. Um, <clears throat> There'd be a motion to accept the findings of 
fact is suggested in the staff report, or sometimes a particular commissioner will have certain findings that they'll you know want the commission to adopt. I think in based this case, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, based upon your your observation, George, the uh, I had assumed that the um, staff report was a finding of fact. Um, and so um, what you're saying is, is that we need two motions. And I would suggest that that is burdensome and unnecessary if we accept the staff report that uh, the minutes should show that our acceptance of the staff report is inherent in the approval of a certificate of appropriateness. Well, as long as those are the adoptions, you know, because it's possible <clears throat> that it's, there's, you know, the commission can find differently. So it just as long as, I mean, if we want to take it as a compound motion to adopt the findings of fact and accept the grant, then at least there'll be findings of fact that we can refer to as having been made by the commission. This, let's see. This isn't for the grant. This is for just the certificate of appropriateness. That's correct. Correct. Yes. So the grant's a different thing. <laughs> I make a motion to accept the findings of fact and to approve the petition for the certificate of appropriateness. A second. Oops, go ahead. All right, we've had a motion and a second uh, for two related um, items. And uh, may we have a roll call vote on those? Yes, and I'm gonna switch to um, calling the vice chair last. So, um, Ms. Giselle? Yes. Ms. Grayling? Yes. Ms. Peters? Yes. And Mr. Coos? Yes. Um, that motion carries. Ms. Boyle, it would be useful uh, for any of us if you could prepare a, uh, a process document, a one sheet process document that we could refer to so that we can. Um, operate these meetings uh, by the standards, legal standards that you uh, are rightfully asking us to hold to. And yeah, it really would be quite I've useful. Done that. I've done that in the past and, and um, I'll make sure that there's something updated that's available. It would be very, very helpful. I really appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I, I apologize for that. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the next item on agenda is the uh, grant. Mm -hmm. um, for uh, grant application for the funk grant. And uh, do we have a staff report on the funk grant application? We do, um, I'll present that now. Staff is recommending approval of the petition for the funk grant application in the amount of $925. Uh, the proposed cost or the cost that's been estimated by the contractor um, is eight or sorry, let me remember how to read $1,850. Um, the applicant is requesting half of that. Um, all the standards for the funk grant eligibility criteria are met or inapplicable for the proposed project. No sweat equity will be funded. Prevailing wage is not required because it is an owner occupied um, structure. And um, as you just voted on, a uh, certificate of appropriateness is being sought concurrently with this uh, fund grant. Okay, based upon the staff report, can I have a motion to approve the funk grant uh, for BHP 11 21? I make a motion to <clears throat> accept the uh, findings of fact for HP, I'm sorry, BHP 1121 and the funk a motion to approve the uh, petition for the funk grant in the amount of $925. I second that. And may we have a roll call vote on that, please? Yes. Um, Ms. Giselle? Yes. Ms. Grayling? Yes. Ms. Peters? Yes. And Mr. Coos? Yes. That motion carried. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Seckler, for participating in this process and for the preserving what is a, indeed a marvelous building for our community. 
And uh, we all understand it's a work of love to take these care of these places, and your home certainly shows the attention and care that you give to it. Certainly appreciate you bringing you know your needs and reviews to us, and uh, wish you the best of luck with this. Thank you, and I did forward that email already on to Caitlin, so she's got that now. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Okay, uh, our next case, BHP 14-21, um, has the petitioner requested that it be tabled until our July meeting uh, for a modified request. I would like to note that I did visit that meeting about a week and a half ago, or visit that building about a week and a half ago. Well, you know, I've checked it out. And um, the storm windows that you see in the photograph and the staff report have been removed. And uh, there is indeed, in my opinion, an 1885 storefront there. Um, what's really quite, and I really encourage you to go look at it. I really do. Um, the storm windows uh, created um, some deterioration of the sills. They trap water and start to rot in the sills. And so there's a structural thing going on as a result of that storm window application. It's pretty clear they didn't put weep holes in it. And, but what's, what's really remarkable is the thinness of the um, uh, styles, uh, the uprights and the crossbars that hold those four sheets of glass in. They're in incredibly thin. But yeah, I mean, this thing has held up beautifully since 1885. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's really worth looking at, it really is. So I encourage you to do so. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I will definitely check that out. Okay, our uh, next case, uh, BHP-16-21, uh, Application for Certificate of Appropriateness for the uh, Francis Funk House circa 1875 on Franklin Square. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, and we have our staff report on this. And, uh, Vice Chair Coos, um, may I interject? I just wanna confirm that we did not need a vote for tabling. And that might be a George question. You know, since it's a, it's a request of the kind of six of one half dozen of the other. I think formally okay. we do normally do need a vote to table to a date certain. Uh, if, if, we're, if we're okay, since we've already opened the other case and you think it's okay, then just want to make sure. I think it's fine. It was requested by the applicant. And uh, I guess one thing is we could ask if the commission members, if there's any objection to tabling it to the date certain. And the date certain, by the way, is July 15. Not seeing any objections. No one, yeah. There's some nods. Okay, so we think we're okay to continue with the okay. next case. Thank you. Yes. Okay, and uh, the staff report. Staff is recommending approval of the certificate of appropriateness requested. Um, this should look familiar. Uh, Essentially, um, this is a duplex. So the first half or, you know, 319 and a half came before you in March. This is the other half. Um, it's the replacement of 49 storm windows with the um, same brand and type of windows as previously discussed in the March case. I have included a picture later on in the presentation. Um, the existing windows, um, as you may recall, are difficult to open. Some are fairly deteriorated or completely inoperable. Um, and its place would be the Larson Premium Series storm windows in uh, that white shade. Um, as you might recall from the previous case, uh, the only difference is this has that or the existing windows have that aluminum and uh, the proposed windows would have the white, um, make it a little bit more homogenous with the trim of the windows on the structure. Um, all of the findings of fact are met. I can go through them uh, specifically or individually on request if you would like. 
Um, but in all staff is recommending approval of the uh, request. Great. Do we have any, is Mr. Maurer here to uh, make any comments on this? Mr. Williams is here, the contractor. Mr. Williams is here. Uh, Mr. Williams, would you like to uh, make any comments on this project? Can we have the witness no. sworn? Oh, we got to swear you in. Uh, we probably, Mr. Williams, just ought to just like, you know, swear you in at the beginning of the year and just say a coach <laughs> for each meeting. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know that would pass George's uh, set of rule book. In any case, um, if I get this correct, uh, Mr. Williams, do you swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth regarding this project and your testimony today? Yes, I do. Thank you. If you uh, would care to share with us what you uh, wanted to talk about on this project. Uh, the, this is very similar, almost identical to uh, 319 and a half, which was the east side of the building. So this is the west side of the building. The actual address is 319. Uh, it's an additional uh, 48 storm windows. Um, there's almost a hundred windows on that building. Amazing. And uh, so the mill finish ones are, I don't know how old, I'm guessing World War II era, somewhere around in there, they're, they, their life is uh, pretty much used up and time for new storm windows. Uh, they're not, the, the ones that are there just don't function. Um, there's missing parts and pieces and um, for a good functioning window. Uh, it's typically a storm windows, average life expectancy is around 60 years. And these are older than 60 years. Um, they've, uh, they can be recycled. You guys have any other questions or? Anybody on the commission have any questions for Mr. Williams? And I also, I wanted to say, I really appreciate the county. These are really comfy chairs. The county's <laughs> done a great job. And I'm really happy with the way that my tax dollars are spent on these chairs. And uh, I could sit here all night. Um, and uh, uh, very, very nice way everything is set up. And uh, you guys are doing a great job. <laughs> So you won't object to any increase in your property taxes to pay for those chairs, sir? <laughs> Probably. I think I've got at least one or two permits this year. So I probably will be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, any, other, any questions for Mr. Williams? Okay, hearing none, we have, uh, we have a positive staff report. Do I have a motion to approve uh, the certificate of appropriateness for this project? I, I uh, make a motion to approve the um, case BHP 1621 um, for a certificate of appropriateness for storm window replacement for the property located at 319 East Chestnut Street. And do I assume that your motion includes a state approval of a statement of fact? Yes, I inherent in that is my approval of the statement of fact by the staff. Okay. Is that okay, George? Yes, it is. Thank you. I'll, I'll second that. May we have a roll call, please? Ms. Giselle. Yes. Ms. Grayling. Yes. Ms. Peters. Yes. And Mr. Coos. Yes. That motion carried. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, our next case, I'm scrolling down here through the uh, reports. Take me a bit to get to it. Uh, I've also got have... it pulled up on screen here. Oh, oh okay. Great. Thank you. Um, we have the, uh, let's see, 
I'm sorry, I have to dump something down here. Um, consideration of a pump grant in the amount of $5,000 for storm winter replacement uh, for the property for 19 East Chestnut Street. Are there any, um, is there a separate staff report on this? There is, but uh, we're recommending approval of the uh, the uh, funk grant. Um, just to briefly go over it, the uh, total estimated cost is $13,475. Um, all of the standards are either met or inapplicable for the proposed project. No sweat sweat equity will be funded. Prevailing wage is required in this case because it's not an owner occupied structure. Um, and you guys just voted on the certificate of appropriateness. So you're aware that it's being sought concurrently. Okay. Um, the, um, may we have a motion to, um, you know, first of all, I guess, are there any questions of commission members uh, on the staff report? No. Okay. Um, may we have a motion to accept these findings of fact on the staff report, as well as approval of the uh, FUNC grant for $5,000 for this project? I make a motion for case <clears throat> to approve case BHP 1621, uh, establish facts, uh, statement of uh, findings of fact, and the motion to approve the uh, fund grant in the amount of $5,000 for storm windows. Excuse me, I think we're now on to BHP case 1721. I'm sorry, I'm reading the, I'm reading the, the uh, oh, yeah, yes. that's my bad. <laughs> Well, right. we just need to make sure that it's in the record correctly. <laughs> You're right. And I was looking at the screen, so. <laughs> okay. So, okay, let me, let me retract. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> I recommend a motion for case BHP 1721. <clears throat> motion to accept the... Uh, uh, findings, facts of findings of facts. Sorry, and uh, um, approval of the uh, fund grant in the amount of five thousand dollars. I second that. Okay. okay, may we have a roll call vote, please? Miss Giselle. Yes. Miss Grayling. Yes. Miss Peters. Yes. And Mr. Coos. Yes. That motion carried. Okay. Um, we have completed our uh, regular agenda. Uh, we'll move nope, to we have, no, oh, no, no, no. We have two more items. Oh, I missed that. Uh, painting. I'm sorry. I did miss those, didn't I? All right. Okay. Uh, BHP 18-21 uh, application for submission of certificate appropriateness for the Madison P. Carlock House, Davis Jefferson. Uh, yeah. Historic district. We have a staff report. Staff is recommending approval of the certificate of appropriateness in this case. Uh, the proposed work entails scraping and sanding loose paint by hand, printing and painting, or sorry, priming and painting the body of the structure with glid and high endurance plus exterior paint and primer, which is a hundred percent acrylic paint, um, and painting the windows and trim by hand. Uh, here is a uh, <clears throat> commission um, that the color proposed is out of the purview of the commission, but a paint sample was provided by the applicant. It would be, I believe, that mountain slate blue that's in the middle there. Mm, completely changing it. Um, as to the findings of fact, um, all of the findings were met or inapplicable. And uh, with that, the staff or staff is recommending approval of the certificate of appropriateness. Hey, is there uh, anybody here representing uh, the house or the project? Um, yes, my name is Mark Haggerty. I'm the owner. Okay. Uh, and Mark, uh, we need to swear you in. Sure. 
part of the process. So uh, do you swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth uh, regarding case BHP 18-21? Yes, I do. Okay. Please uh, thank you for, for coming and being with us tonight and uh, interested in what you have to say. So if you would please tell us what, sure. what your plans uh, are. Well, the plans, of course, are to uh, finally get it painted. Um, I had submitted one a couple years ago, but due to medical issues, I was not able to do that. Um, but I am changing the color to a much uh, more palatable color. <laughs> and um, I am going to be doing the work by myself with my, um, with my children. Um, they're going to be helping. And um, I do plan to have that done by the end of the year. Um, that is my goal. Um, and in, in reading through this, there, and there are a few soffits that do need to be repaired, which they will be repaired with, you know, the same material that's currently there. So, because it's, it's been a few years, uh, since it's been painted. So we got to get it, we're getting it done. Yeah. I think we would probably need a certificate of appropriateness separate on the carpentry work. Okay. So you need to document what you're doing with that and uh, come, come to us for your plans on the scope of work, kinds of materials used and, and sure. existing conditions. Okay. Yes, I will, I'll do that. So it's clear for everybody that our decisions here will not involve uh, carpentry work, strictly painting. <clears throat> okay, so we, could you continue? Do you have anything mm, that, further to add? Uh, nothing further to add. Okay. Um, the uh, staff report was positive. Uh, are there any questions on the part of any of the uh, members of the commission? Um, I guess I only have the one question probably, which would be, I'm assuming that so you, you have confidence that you can do the painting. Uh, if it comes down to the carpentry work and you don't have confidence in that, um, do you have someone in mind that you're planning to work with to kind of recommend or because I know at what I could probably tell you is you could go to the um, Old House Society um, uh, um, renovation or restoration um, area and ask them for uh, recommendations and they would probably be able to provide you with some people who would be able to do the work if you find yourself in over your head. Yeah. Um, I don't find, I won't find myself in over my head. I've, I've done this in the past. Oh, good. So, yes. I've, I've painted a few homes oh, in the past wow. and I do carpentry work on the side. So great. Okay. It, it's an, that's a non-issue. Good. But, good. but thank you. For, thank you for that information on the old house society in case I do need uh, you know, second opinions and stuff. Yeah, they are always really good about giving giving information, and um, they have a huge. Uh, I, I would imagine you're probably already uh, aware of this, um, but you know their membership is always really, really glad to share too. So, okay. great, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Mr. Coos. Yes, um, Mr. Chazelle. I was wondering. Um, is there a reason why you're using acrylic instead of oil-based primer? Um, that was just the one that I went with because it had the paint and primer in one. Um, I mean, if it's required, I, I will use it oil-based. I mean, it's just, that's what I decided to go with. I, I will say, uh, Ms. Giselle, and something I was gonna bring up that the, uh, and I am not a paint expert by any means, but the uh, Secretary of Interior Standards for paint was written in 1982. I looked at that this morning. And there's been a world of change in paint chemistry and paint technology since 1982. And um, I, um, 
I don't know enough to say. I mean, I guess, I guess the first question would be, do you know, are you painting over uh, oil or are you painting over latex or you, uh, do you know which? Um, I don't, I know the house was painted about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know which it is. Um, I can, I can find out. Okay. Um, I, I think it's a matter of, you know, whether, um, the work you're going to put into it, how long, how durable it is. And so the, the question that we ask, would ask on this is really to encourage you to uh, ensure that you are working with compatible materials when you're coming mm -hmm. to, uh, to application of paint so that you will end up with a durable, uh, durable finish. Okay. Um, yep. I, again, I, I do not, I'm not a paint expert. Uh, I'm sorry that, uh, our chair isn't here to weigh in on this and help us a little bit with this conversation. Um, it's from what I was reading this morning on acrylics, uh, acrylics are compatible with latex if that is what is there. I do not know about the compatibility of acrylic if it's an existing oil. So it's, mm -hmm. it's so, and in terms of this question, um, do we want to get a firmer statement. Okay. So that's, that's one question here that I think we need to kind of come to a conclusion with. And thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Giselle. Uh, the second one is that you um, have talked about um, hand scraping, which is great. And it's really a, a fine way of going about it. Um, were you planning on power washing it or were you going to uh, hand scrub with uh, TSP, trisodium phosphate? Um, I would hand scrub it. I'm, I'm not power washing. Okay, that's great. So I think the, it's good that the record would reflect that, uh, that, that some people try to do that and they, they, get into, they do a lot of damage with those machines. So thank you for your sensitivity on that. Yep. Mr. Coos, I have a, another question for you. Yes. Uh, is it, if he, if he was painted 15 years ago, <clears throat> wouldn't there be an, a, um, a certificate of appropriateness for that? Or no? I, I do not know enough about the city archives on whether they maintain that or not, and what quality of uh, material they were collecting 15 years ago. So I, I, I'm sorry, I just can't answer that. Okay. And that, that was an estimate on my part, because I know oh. from the prior owner that we bought it from, because we bought this in 2006, um, mm -hmm. and they had said it had been paid in it might have been 10 years prior to when we bought it. So 20 years ago. I can speak to that. Um, I, I did research into our the city archives on documents. Um, there was not a certificate of appropriateness for painting. There was mentioned that the house had been restored um, in testimony mm -hmm. for previous cases, but um, that had to do with, I believe, like a land use case regarding the, the property rather than a, a historic preservation case. Yeah. I'm not sure that historically, um, all the way back, there was a requirement to get a certificate of appropriateness for exterior painting. I would say there probably wasn't back in the day and I know I know back in the day, they did not, um, they did not uh, reimburse for painting. That I know. Because there, yes. there was at least one person who came up to me and said, what's all this business about you guys giving out money to, you know, to buy paint? Well, when I owned whatever, we sure couldn't do that. And so it was, I know that that was a, a bone of contention for that person. And they wished they could have gotten in on that back in the day. So I think that things have changed over time. And so I'm not certain when that would have begun where you would need the certificate of appropriateness for the exterior painting. Makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do we have any other questions uh, on this? Um, should we um, 
we have our staff report and we've had our discussion with Mr. Haggerty's um, review of the project. Um, could I have a motion for approval of this? Yes. So we just, for the record, uh, <clears throat> ascertain whether there's anybody else who would be testifying on it. Sure. Is there anyone else uh, who would testify on this project? No one registered and no one is present here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, George. Um, can we have a motion uh, that would establish fact and a motion to approve uh, the certificate of appropriateness? I would like to uh, go ahead then and make that motion on case BHP 1821 um, to um, approve the um, findings of fact on um, this case and also uh, to uh, grant a certificate of appropriateness for exterior painting for the property located at 1001 East Jefferson Street. I second. Great. May we have a roll call? Ms. Giselle? Yes. Ms. Grayling? Yes. Ms. Peters? Yes. And Mr. Coos? Yes. That passed. Okay, and our next case then is a um, project to uh, see, were we doing a grant on this one? Yeah, it's a, um, a yes. grant application. Okay. Yes. For a yeah, different that's... property, sorry. Okay, so it's not for, for the uh, Madison Carlock House, correct? Correct. Correct. Yeah, again, I'm trying to read your screen and my screen here at the same time. Anyway, so um, thank you, Mr. Haggerty. Uh, good luck with your project. Uh, I hope that you do take a little bit of time to uh, ensure that your paint compatibility uh, is being dealt with by your paint choice. Yep, I will, and thank you for your time. Okay, well, thank you, and good luck with the project. Thank you. Okay, uh, BHP case 2021, consideration review of action, petition submitted by Matt Erickson for Russ Grant, about $1,300 for window replacement at 212 North Roosevelt Street. And so this is not, you know, although it is, it is a 1923, um, actually, you know, it's interesting that house is, was, the house that's underneath all of the red brick was built about 1845 to 1855, somewhere in that period. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some images of it. And uh, it was significantly altered uh, for club purposes uh, in 1923 by Pillsbury and then expanded uh, by uh, Salvation Army for their purposes. And so it really, I, I, I think that when we, um, do, I don't want to say this, when we present these pieces that would be appropriate for us to, if we, if the, if the information is available, to, to give a sense of the complexity of, of the sites. And so, and uh, of the age of them. Because it's, it's I, I believe, um, I think Lewis Bunn built the house about 1850. Let's just put that as a date. And I, uh, he, um, in any case, it's a, there's a really old house underneath there, which I think is kind of cool. Well, so much for that. <laughs> um, the, um, is there a uh, person, is Mr. Erickson here to uh, represent this? I'm not sure. I don't have the, uh, since I've is got there, the screen share up. Do you um, have a staff report, Caitlin? I do. Um, so I, I know. I, I, mean, I don't want to get ahead of you there, Greg. But I mean, we could we could do that perhaps, and uh, then see if Mr. Erickson's on. Sure. So Certainly. I know. It, I know it says here um, motion to approve or deny the petition, but ultimately staff has decided to recommend approval of the petition. Okay. Um, so please continue. 
the uh, proposed work, it would be the replacement of four east facing windows with double hung white vinyl windows with an aluminum border. Um, as I understand it, I believe the structure is not contributing and not zoned S4. And as I was saying, not contributing to the downtown historic district. Um, it's actually not within the boundaries of the historic district. Oh, it's okay. outside the boundaries of the downtown historic district. I see. Um, the existing conditions of the current windows, you can see some of them are uh, boarded up. Some of them appear to be in a deteriorated condition. Um, the applicant provided two different uh, bids, one for $2,707 and uh, one for uh, $1,423. Uh, staff found that most of the criteria was met. Um, staff did not reach a determination regarding the third criterion in terms of all building structures and sites shall be recognized as products of their own times. Um, alterations that have no historical basis and seek to create an earlier appearance shall be discouraged. Uh, based on the history Mr. Cruz provided, um, I would say that that standard is met. It is not seeking to create an earlier appearance. Um, and the rest grant eligibility, uh, eligibility criteria has been met. So we're recommending approval. Thank you. I think that I'm gonna ask for a, a correction in what she said in that the, um, the one, um, um, the one person who did the estimate, it was, I think she said 1400 or something. It's actually 1923 for the one. Okay, so it's one nine two three. At least I can see that on my copy. Yeah, I'm I'm reading off of the screen, so I. And then may the not other have that right. The other one was twenty seven oh seven. So, so nineteen twenty three, twenty seven oh seven. Those are your two estimates. Well, and I think the estimate that is um, uh, is really his choice. It's the petitioner's choice. I don't think we really uh, are obligated to uh, say, well, we would, we're not awarding bid. We are reviewing a grant application. And he did state that his, his preference was estimate number one. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, George, do you agree with that analysis? Which, in terms of picking the, the bid, or I'm, I'm yeah, sorry, we're not. The last part. Yeah, well, essentially that we are uh, not in a position to. Uh, we're we're not looking at competitive bids. We are looking at right. what a grant applicant is proposing and what the preference is. Right. Right. I just wanted do to make sure. <clears throat> Are we certain that Mr. Erickson or no one from the uh, applicant is is on? Well, I'm as I look at who's on, um, because because of our screen, you, city clerk's office, Sherry, Don, myself, two from the city okay. clerk. So you know, so it's basically yeah. Staff I just wanted to you know kind of members. make a record and before we speculate yeah. in case he in case he was on. Every once in a while that happens in this kind of setting, and yeah. sure, you know. That's all. Yeah, that's certainly fair, and thank you for asking that. Mm -hmm. But I agree, it's not. We're not. We're not picking bids. We're uh, you're making decision about the uh, availability of the grant, and if so, the size of it. My question on this one would be: Why are we talking about a vinyl window if there's some other possibility? Well, the other, they're both vinyl windows. Right. Yeah. Um, but I know I, that you get other things besides vinyl windows. Yeah. But I thought about that and I'm familiar with the property. Oh, I am I, too. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I'm looking at this as a situation of um, 
need to get the place sealed up better. Yeah. And that uh, when I would imagine there's probably eight different kinds of windows on that building. Yeah. Um, and it is, um, I don't want to say he, he is not changing. Um, I mean, first of all, this is not, this is a rust grant for a commercial pro property, not for profit right. property, and not a rust grant for a historic property. That's my understanding. Right. And that it's also my understanding that when we look at rust grants, and George, I really want you to weigh in on this. When we look at rust grants that are not within a historic district, then we don't really get too much involved with, um, I want to say, uh, with the higher standards of the National Trust is it, and the Secretary of Interior standards. Is that correct? I think that's I think that's accurate. Okay, Caitlin, is that your take on it? I have a fairly limited understanding of the rust grant criteria, but that is my understanding of it. Okay. Yeah. So I think that he's he's not shrinking the windows. He's he's keeping the original window opening size and right. he's using a, a simple you know uh, double sash, uh, which. Right. So I think on that basis, he's actually being at least visually, it's visually compatible yes, to, I uh, to the rest of the building. I don't know. Um, I just Dawn, wondered, you, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Dawn, do you have, I was just, do you have anything to weigh in on this, Dawn? No, that was my same question, but, um, you know, about the window type, um, but I think you adequately explained yeah, it's my view on it. If this again, if this was in the historic district, I sure. would absolutely agree with Sherry that a vinyl window yeah. is inappropriate. Yeah, there is a spot where it does say in the staff report about how, <clears throat> um, although a certificate of appropriate is not requir required, the historic preservation shall be guided by the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and Guidelines uh, for rehabilitating historic buildings. But I. I tend to agree that you have that discretion, Craig, especially since, as you're saying, it's not altering the premises in any right in any substantial way. And if, if anything, it's preserving the premises. It sounds like what you're saying be, from uh, leaking and, and so on. Yeah, no. So I, I, I think we want to understand we're not setting a precedent here. Yeah, and, uh, Mr. Vi Vice Chair? Yes. Um, I have the, the guidelines in front of me, if I may read two paragraphs. Thank you. Um, so it's a preference will be given to structures of architectural or historic significance as determined by the commission. Properties lacking architectural or historic significance may be deemed eligible for the program if proposed changes will create a facade typical of the time period in which the building was constructed. Approval is contingent upon the Historic Preservation Commission finding that the grant application is in substantial compliance so not full substantial with the secretary of the interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings. Um, and then it does say um, the historic preservation commission reserves the right to deny any grant application based upon the applicant failing to demonstrate the proposed project will be in accordance with the city of Bloomington preservation plan and city of Bloomington zoning ordinance. I, th I think my biggest concern with it is that um, since I've, I've become a, an adherent to the, you know, but replacement windows, you know, they call them replacement windows because you have to keep replacing them. And usually that does tend to happen with the vinyl. And so all I was thinking mostly was, um, I guess I would hate to see them get these and then have to do it again in 10 years if there was some way that we could um, do something else that would last longer and maybe a wood one would last longer or a wood one with vinyl cladding or something like that. I don't know. That's all I'm, that was my main thing is to actually make it so that it would be a better long-term project for him because Yes, I have been to that place. In fact, when, when I came, this was one of our winners, guys. This was uh, one of the uh, recipients of our awards uh, this time. And it was for 
um, adaptive reuse. And so I asked him, I'd like to go through and see this place and see what you've done. And he has bit himself off a lot to chew. So this is going to be one drop in the bucket of what he's got in front of him. So I guess I'm just thinking in terms of how this will be carrying forward as far as having to do it again and again and again, or if we could, you know, I don't know. That was just my thought. So, so, so you're suggesting that if I hear you, Sherry, that we should apply a higher standard in terms of saying, ask him to identify a better quality window. Yes. Um, that would be my idea because for his benefit and the building's benefit. But if the uh, the other problem though is um, if he if he can't afford to do that and and his um, situation is such that it just can't be contained and now his exterior envelope is uh, you know not no longer impervious to the elements, then he's going to have a problem. So I, I hate to mess him over with that but i still would like to see something a little higher on that building the, That's um, yeah I, I i hear you the uh inexpensive wood windows i'm not even going to use the word inexpensive um, the David Davis Mansion had new uh, yellow pine windows made for the wood house. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to say uh, in a project that Randy Middleton was architect on. Right. And he said that those windows lasted 15 to 20 years and rotted. And so a question I have about us asking for wood windows uh, is, are there wood windows? Is it, is it realistic to assume that a wood window is going to outperform, I'm not going to say vinyl, but outperform a metal window or something, or a metal window, uh, or uh, aluminum wrap wood window? Yeah, an aluminum. You know, the higher window, because yeah. it's um, the wood windows, I mean, they simply don't have access to the, to the wood stock of those right. uh, historic windows that, that we're so interested in preserving. Yeah. And so it's, and he's got one window that's entirely gone yeah. and he's replacing another. Now I suppose we could say, well, what is that other window that you're replacing? What's the composition of it? And talk, talk about that. That would be another thing to look at. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really torn because I hate to just keep this going and then he doesn't get anything done. Um, and I wish, I wish, um, like crazy that he was here tonight so we could actually have a conversation with him. Um, that would be ideal. Okay. Well, that's not inherently a bad idea. You know? um, that's a way of saying it's a good idea, Sherry. It's, <laughs> um, yeah, because I, I would like, you know, what is the other window? Is it next to it? Uh, what's its composition? Yeah. Um, so what what's the window system uh, that right. exists throughout there? And should, should we be looking at trying to get him to come up with compatible window systems? Yeah. Um, Don, you've done a number of projects. I'd love to hear you weigh yeah, in I'm, on this. I'm looking at um, actually the website. This is one of the advantages to like being on Zoom while we're talking. <laughs> um, I looked up the soft light uh, element window um, that, that he wants on his, on that second proposal. Um, you know, it, the limited information that I can find, uh, sounds like it is a pretty high quality window. Um, they will never rot like wood windows or corrode like metal windows. Um, they will never separate on like inferior wood, metal, or vinyl windows. Um, yeah. You know, I, I would think that he is trying to create a cohesive um, look mm -hmm. on the building. Um, so I, I would assume, and maybe that's a question back to him, um, that as he's doing replacements, this would be the same window that he would be using 
in other areas. Don, yes. when I was looking at these, both of these proposals, the one that you were talking about, the soft light uh, elements, to me, that was the one that would be of the two of these, there was no question that was the one to do, but it is, you know, 2707 and the other one is 1923. So there's a- I think he, if I read correctly, I think he preferred the 2707. Yes, oh. he did. Yeah. Okay, well, good. I yeah. thought he was, I thought it was the other one that he, so good. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, I would go, I would definitely, definitely go with the 2707 one over that 1923 from everything I read about that, so. Yes, Sherry, I was wondering about that because I was looking at the amount of the rest grant and thinking, well, that's not right for the for the one that's 19 something. And I'm like, hmm, it just wasn't adding up, you know? Okay, good. Well, yeah, I, definitely I would say if he's if he's going for the, for the 2707 one, I I have less way less problems with that one than the other one. They also have a lifetime warranty. Yeah, Ooh. I like that. So in other words, if they do need to be replaced, he can get them replaced. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, that is. Because again, yes, I've seen this place inside and out. And first of all, it is immense. And I mean, it has so much work need, needing to be done, but it's going to be he's got a lot of vision i gotta give him that so would it would it be and i don't know does does the rust grant allow for planning money Ooh, that would be good for him especially mm -hmm. mm. Uh, miss kelly or mr boyle do you know if we the could, rust brand i don't planning? know we could look at that but it wouldn't be on this application anyway no, not you know, on this application but, but yeah oh, down the road saying. that's a good i don't know i don't know off the top of my head I, yeah I, I would. not to my awareness yeah, what I, was your I, question I, mr coots um can you repeat the question please yeah whether whether planning money uh can be funded under a rust grant hmm. uh, uh, i i it, think you know, because if, if, if Mr. Erickson is going to be approaching each window as a one off, which is a bad oh. practice, um, we're reinforcing what is not necessarily good practice. Of course, he's got windows out, he wants to get new windows in, you know. So that's mm -hmm. like, you know, we, we hear from rough people, I got to get a rough. So, you know, it's, and, and we, we expedite those kinds of grants. Uh, we've been doing that. I've noticed that since I've been on this. But what I'm wondering is, is whether we could encourage, if we can find out if, if there is a Russ Grant could do some planning, is whether we could ask uh, him to consider going for a Russ Grant to plan a window program, you know, to, that is to, to um, put this into a context of something other than I need two windows. Yes. Longer term. So, Mr. Kuss, uh, un under eligible improvements, two things listed um, detailed architectural design work. There you go. That's probably the closest. The other is in uh, excuse me, structural inspection, analysis, and reporting of a building to determine its safety, structural integrity by a licensed architect or structural engineer. Mm -hmm. Possibly the first one. Probably the first one. Yep. Boy, I, I would think the second one, if you, you could say you need a uh, window program uh, plan that an engineer and or architect would work with them on. True. I think the second one, because architectural plans aren't going to be as useful course you could do architectural plans on windows e either either i think could probably fit mr boyle do you agree with that yes okay so um would would you think that it would be appropriate for us to approve the rust grant 
for the window replacement with the encouragement that he come back to us with a request for a planning grant for a comprehensive window survey, uh, window study recommendation plan so that, or he may say, well, no, these are the only bad ones. And, you know, I, I don't know. So it's just that I think one offs on this is just something we want to avoid. I guess that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, especially on a um, uh, the scale of this building. My goodness, I mean, the amount of openings in this building. This could go on and on and on and on mm -hmm. if we're doing it one at a time. Yeah. So depends on well, probably there are probably yeah. a bunch of them that were at the same time and. If these are wearing out, the ones on the same face of the building probably are wearing out too. Depending on exposure and stuff. Well, I think it, as Mr. Goose was saying, I mean, you can reach out to them afterwards on something, but the one that's in front of us now is either this one to either be, you know, approved, denied, or tabled. Yeah. Can, can I just make a motion that we approve it and um, that we uh, accept the findings of fact? Do I hear a second? I second. <laughs> Pick one. That was close. <laughs> may, may, may we have a uh, roll call? Yes. Uh, Ms. Giselle. Yes. Ms. Grayling. Yes. Ms. Peters. Yes. And Mr. Coos. Yes. That passed. Okay. So I have a question then, Mr. Coos. So is yes. are we still recommending to him? We're, we're, we're making asking, a recommendation. We're asking staff to oh. reach out to him right. when when the uh, okay. he earns of this award of our concern that okay. A, systematic approach be taken towards windows and that, uh, that we might be able to help with a with funding that. Okay. <clears throat> Caitlin, does that make sense? Does that work for you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So um, next item on our agenda is old business. Anybody have old business? Um, I'm not sure if this is the place for me to say it, <laughs> but again, um, we need to do something to um, make certain that we're technologically supporting our historic preservation commission by updating the the page that we have at the um, city. Uh, website because right now as it stands as of like 10 minutes before this meeting began I checked again and there still is nothing populating our current awards area so and again this has been a bone of contention with the people who talked about this to their friends oh go to the website because I told them it's going to be at the website and they keep talking to me and saying, so where is it? And I'm, I don't know what to tell them. So that's, I guess that's old business. <laughs> okay, uh, does anybody have any further discussion on that? I've not looked at the website myself. Um, I, uh, I <clears throat> with, the fact that the our support staff is down one person, mm -hmm. um, I would say that we would want to um, be considerate of uh, a additional workload on people in the department based upon uh, the recent recent resignation. Um, so there's that. Well, I have a question. Is it the support staff that does that or is it tech? I was told it was tech people. So are they still 
we'll look we will look into it for you we'll we'll try to make that happen thank, thank you, you. <clears throat> sherry does that satisfy you yeah okay <laughs> is there other old business okay hearing none new business is there new business anybody would put forward I guess I would like to just reiterate uh, my request with uh, George that we um, have a uh, rules of the road one sheet yeah. piece that we can use so that our meetings are uh, run in a manner by which we meet our legal obligations. I only appreciate your friendly yeah. reminders about our about these obligations and i think having a, a rules of the road piece would uh would help us all with that yeah well you're right and we have had them for um all the boards and commissions and even for uh, some of the types of hearings with this commission but i don't know that it's been updated or produced and it could also it should probably be given at a minimum to the chairman and the vice chair so that you're you're covered when these things happen so i'll make sure that you get something that's updated and and mr charnett as well and then okay. others if they're curious you know it's not a it's not going to be top secret uh okay. but yeah those things should be updated and distributed so i also I appreciate one more you're doing this okay go ahead sir and one more question are we going to get copies of the Lakota Group's um, historic plan? I can speak to that. So that's currently under staff review. We've just received the most recent copy. There were some adjustments sent to them and then referred back to us. Um, we're aware that the grant is, um, it was extended, but it closes out in September. Okay. So um, the goal is to get it through the final staff review steering committee back to you and then I believe to council um, for final adoption if I'm not mistaken that was part of the idea was to adopt it as an amendment to the comprehensive plan I hope I'm not misspeaking mm -hmm. um, but so to to run it through so um, yes it will be we're, the idea was to give you a clean copy Great. that's pretty much ready to go there, there are a few things that have some policy implications that need to be reviewed by levels higher than myself um, and they require some discussion and time and we've been kind of working it. it it's been with staff. It's working its way through okay. the, through this the system. So thank you for your patience on that. We're, we will bring Since something back to you. Policy questions, are those internal policy questions or are they, uh, policy questions that affects the entire community? Uh, I would say both. Yeah, yeah. And I'm probably um, at this point with it not being an agenda item and still under review and comfortable getting too detailed um, at yeah. this time. But we'll, the idea is to get it back to the steering committee as soon as possible. Sorry. <laughs> well, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's make it a item for our agenda for our July meeting to have a report. Okay. On the on the historic preservation plan. If you're supposed to be wrapped by September, I am afraid that if we wait until August, that may not give everybody enough time to react to what we might. Want and I believe to do. that was our goal. And he, and I, I also had a recent conversation with the the consultant. So we're we're rolling. So yes, <laughs> we'll make a note. So uh, is that a commitment that uh, we will be able to uh, have a document in front of us, oh, let's say a week ahead of time uh, of the that July meeting so we have an opportunity to digest uh, it? Particularly, I mean, I, I've read it about four times. So highlighting the policy issues, you know, the highlighting the, the if there's things in contention, highlighting those so that we, we, we're all kind of on the same page about what, what the concerns are. Is yeah, that Yeah, and possible? I want to be clear, it, it, there's not necessarily anything of contention. We just, you know, want to make sure we've got a clean document going out. And just it, I think a lot of it was just timing, um, even before being down one staff member. There, you know, there's just a lot of things that have been competing, unfortunately. Um, and I think, uh, like I said, we're, but we know that we've got to close it out th by the summer. We are, we are aware of that. Because yeah, I think one of the things that um, 
my experience with, with city plans is that it's very, very easy to say thank you and then put them on a shelf and that's where they live. And um, the, I, I would see that this commission could actually uh, do some work in terms of generating uh, public interest in it. Uh, we could certainly do some work in getting out into the public and talking to people. It's part of the, one of the things that we are supposed to do as a commission is to educate the public. Right. And we've been primarily, you know, our, our one educational process has been the award program, and that's a great educational program. But uh, a massive and major document like this, um, it strikes me that we ought to plan what the commission can do yeah. in terms of helping launch this and helping get this into uh, at least discussion with neighborhoods that are impacted by it uh, and get some, uh, some uh, community excitement developed on it. It's, 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 it's a remarkable document. You know, the Dakota group has just done a superb job from everything I've, I've read on this. And so it's something not only to be proud of, but also something to, to really get some community backing on and some community solidarity on it. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. I haven't Good seen it in finality, so I'm excited um, about it. Just to introduce some new old business, uh, Matt Erickson, the petitioner for the last case is, is on the line if you would like to speak with him. Well, we've settled that. Okay. And so could summarize. Uh, yeah. um, I'm, yeah. I don't think we can reopen the case, but I suppose what we could do is talk about what our uh, question, what are, what our ideas were in terms of the project. And so since I've, I've been talking too much today, I'd like somebody else to weigh in on where we're at. I think if you want to reach out to him, that's fine. Otherwise, staff could reach out to him along the lines that you uh, indicated. Um, you're right, though. I, I, it, it's already been approved. So with respect to that, we there's no wouldn't be reopening it. Well, he, he has called in, so I, I think that um, we owe him uh, a response for his uh, courtesy of calling in and reaching out to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just more of a situation. So. I, uh, Mr. Erickson, can you hear us? Uh, yeah, yes, hello. Go on. Okay. Um, I'm Greg Coos. I'm the uh, vice chair of the commission. Mr. Charnett was not able to be with us, and so I've been chairing this. Yeah. Um, the commission agreed to uh, your proposal for two windows at $2,700 and uh, Russ paying half, you know, the Russ grant. Um, concern was raised that it was a one-off situation. There are probably, what, 60 windows in your building? Um, I have, uh, let's see, so I have 17 windows after these four to be replaced. 17 okay. left to go. We, we think that you need to approach this from a planning viewpoint and not approach it on a one-off, each of the windows I have to do today approach. That is, we think a systematic approach, a planned approach, where you identify a product uh, and you perhaps create a timetable for yourself. Uh, very concerned about um, the kind of window you buy, the impact it will have on the long-term impact it will have on the building. Uh, what windows are existing? Uh, is there a window that has been a dominant historic window that's actually there? Uh, and it, are, is that is there any, you know, has, there's never been, for instance, a survey. And so we sure. think that you could come to the commission and apply for funds for a, for a window survey. Sure. Under the Rust brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that... Uh, that sounds good just with having professional knowledge, you know, really take a look at all of them and pick what could be the best for them. My only concern is that I, I could never ever pay even half of all of 17 windows at one time. 
Uh, no, I'm but, but you able. could come up with a specification so that oh. you know, as you're doing them one off, you know the direction you're headed. Oh, sure. Yes, yes, yes. I was saying I have to do them, you know, three to four at a time is what mm -hmm. I can afford. But yeah, I have no problem like uh, getting someone to tell me, you know, circularly recommend what would be best for each sort of section, each, you know, facing north, facing east, facing west, all that stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. it's a, your, your building, you know, although it's not in a historic district, certainly is, uh, has, has a tremendous amount. Well, you wouldn't have taken that building on if you didn't see the value of it. So I don't yeah, have to preach exactly. to you about it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, and so it's, it's, it's really, it's the idea of being systematic about it. We were troubled by the one-off nature. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I certainly, uh, wished I would have started applying for Russ grants, you know, 10 years ago, but uh, I was sort of slow to the game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, what you might do is talk around to your colleagues and whatnot and see if there's a person who would be willing to work with you in coming up with a specification plan for a window replacement program that you could then implement over a period of time. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I would pretty much look forward to that. Like I said, just to have the more uh, knowledge of of all of those things and seeing what it would, you know, possibly do and cost and and improve the building for sure. And it would be my understanding that if we funded, we would it would be like any other Rust grant, and it would be a fifty percent. Is that correct, uh, Caitlin or George? Yes. That's my understanding. Russ okay. Kimberly has a different. Okay. She's nodding. Okay. Okay. Yes, it's listed in the same list of criteria. Okay. So, so it would be not loud for the record. Okay. Yeah. It, it it would be fifty percent of that planning cost. Okay. That would be uh, something that uh, you would then be able to use in future uh, applications. I. I just think it would be a lot smoother. Uh, I think it would put some, uh, some give you a direction that I think it's, uh, that would probably be useful to you to give you a sense of uh, what, what, you, what you would be getting over a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this, this company that we're going to go with now uh, is certainly the best company and the best quality of window, and I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing with that um, from what I've gotten in the past, which has been yeah. an improvement, but certainly could have been better. Mm -hmm. There's there's considerable skepticism on part of some members of the uh, commission about vinyl windows, and so we would think that you might, as part of the planning process, is broaden your scope about what kind of window you want in terms of longevity and in terms of yeah. affordability. We understand that those, those oh, yeah. are issues, but but to to open yourself up to a little further. Uh, dreaming, thinking, analyzing uh, of, of a direction you'd like to head with it. Yeah, of course. Now, yeah. You might research final windows. It's my understanding that everything that they said is correct, except for they don't take into an impact of um, ultraviolet light, which is deteriorating plastics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, sounds great. Well, we certainly appreciate it, that's for sure. And look forward to uh, applying more in the future. Do, does anyone else have any questions uh, they have for Mr. Erickson about? Uh, and these are not, you know, uh, how do I say this is an informal conversation. So, Georgine yeah. or Sherry or no. Dawn? I, any? I was impressed when I came through and, and visited with Matt and he showed me um, his place. And uh, there's a lot to be done. But he's got great vision, and I'd like to see what the money that he does put into it. I'd like to see him not have to keep putting putting the same thing for the same window over and over and over again. So he can get something that's the most durable product out there and not have to keep replacing it so often. That'd be the best. Thank you. Any any further questions or anything else you might want to talk about, Matt, since you got us? 
Um, uh, nothing as of right now. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I have giant lists for the building, but uh, nothing as of now. But so thank you. Yeah, I think um, just systemic planning oh, yeah. in the long run will yield better results. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Always planning over here. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, thank you, everybody. Th thank you for being with You're us. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, we were doing new business. Um, was there other items of new business anybody wanted to bring up? Mm. No. No. Nope. Hearing none. Um, do I hear a motion for adjournment and a second? I and I will need to do a roll call on this. I motion to adjourn. I second that. Okay. Uh, could we have a roll call, please? Yes. Did she say grayling? Yes. <laughs> I can't hear very well. Very low. I, I'm sorry, I wasn't on. Um, oh, there so, you go. <laughs> I'll recap, maybe we start, we do that again. Ms. Chazelle. Yes. Ms. Grayling. Yes. Ms. Peters. Yes. And Mr. Kuss. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, bye. Everybody be well. Enjoy the weather. Even though it's 90, it's nice out. It is. Absolutely. Bye.